Welcome to LabMinutes.com and our lab video series in BGP. You can find a complete list of VGP video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we're going to look at how we can QoS classify packets based on BGP attributes using a feature called QoS Policy Propagation through BGP or QPPB. For our lab topology, we have seven routers, R1 through R7s with IBGP and EBGP configured as shown in this diagram. And each router has this loopback 10 through 12 advertised into the BGP, and all of these has been configured in our previous labs. So the goal of this lab is to demonstrate how we can control a QoS classification through a BGP attributes. So what we're going to do is to configure R5 to tag certain routes with a certain value of community. And based on the community value as the R1 received those routes, it's going to be setting IP precedence or marking the IP packets with IP precedence according to the community value to IP precedence mapping that we're going to be configuring R1 and then enforce QoS outbound accordingly. Okay, so start with our task number one. Here we have to configure R5 to tag its loopback 10 through 12 with community 510, 511, 512 respectively as they're advertised to the IBGP. Okay, so let's get on to R5 and let's check what we currently have under the router BGP process. The way that we are currently advertising uh, loopbacks right now is by a redistribution that ties to route map. So we can just pretty much leverage that route map and see what we've got. So let's show route map and loopback. So we're going to use that same route map to set our community value. So currently we're just matching all the loopback using a single prefix list. But here we have to create multiple prefix lists, each to match each prefix list to match each of the loopback subnet. So start off with our loopback 10, permit 5500 slash 24. And then you have our 5501 and that's loopback 11 and then 5520 for loopback 12. Then getting on the route map loopback, permit 10. First we have to remove the match IP address prefix list loopback and then replace that with uh, loopback 10 and for loopback 10 we said we're going to set community value of 50 okay and then we're going to do loopback permit 20 matching loopback 11 and that will be community value 51 Actually, that should be 510 in the previous. Go back and fix that real quick. So set community 510. And then for the permit 20, we match loop back 11 and then set community 511. And then for permit 30, we're going to match loop back 12 and then set community 512 and when we usually deal with community value we also want to set the IP BGP new format so we can see the community value in the colon format now under the router BGP 100 to make sure that our peers are sending or exchanging community value we have to configure send community but since r5 is currently using our peer template so we're going to have to set that under a peer policy with the template peer policy as 100 if you scroll up you can see right here we have a peer policy as 100 and then it's going to be a send community and since we're using only standard community we can just press enter Right now, if you do show IP BGP 5500, you can see we already have our, looks like we didn't re quite remove the community 50. So let me uh, route map, loop back, permit 10. Okay, by typing in a community, it doesn't actually replace the previous value that's already there. So you have to explicitly do a no set community 50. Give it a second. While we're waiting, we can do a show route map just to make sure that our route map looks correct. So loopback 10 looks like somehow 
we took out the five, ten as well. So not sure why. So let me put back that and the show route map. Okay, so loopback 10 is 510, loopback 11 is 511, and loopback 12 is 512. Let's take another look. I'm gonna have to do a clear PGP in a little bit. But here you can see that the community values are there when you check the BGP routes. Just to be safe, let's do a clear IP BGP, do a hard clear on that. Okay, so now we have to configure R2 and R1 to also exchange the community or receive the community. Okay, now on R1, we do IP BGP, new format, route BGP 100, same thing, template, peer policy AS100, send community, do a clear IP BGP. And let's just go ahead and do the hard clear for that as well. And now on router R2, IP BGP new format, router BGP 100, template, peer, policy, AS 100, sync community, do clear IP BGP, hard clear. Okay, so now back to our router R5. Let's take a look at 5500 again, and now we only see a community value 510, which is correct. Let's go ahead and check that on R1. So we show IP BGP 5500. Okay, it sees 510. Here we should see 511. And we are also seeing 512. All right, so that should be all we need for that particular task. Then we're going to have to configure R1 to classify packets with community 5, 10, 11, and 12, and match that to a, or map that to IP precedence of 5, 4, and 3, respectively. Okay, the way to do that on R1, we first have to come up with community list to match the community value. I'm just gonna use the value 10 for that, permit. This one's gonna match 5, 10. Next, we have to match 5, 11, and we we'll use community value our community list 20, and the last one have to match 512, and we're gonna use the list 30. Okay, next we have to create a route map, and we're gonna call it QPPB, permit 10, match community 10, so we'll deal with the 510 first, and then we can set IP precedence value five. And then route map 20, match 20. That one's going to be precedence value 4 for our 511. And the last one for permit 30, match community 30. That one we're going to set to precedence 3. Okay, so we can do show route map so you can see on R1. Here's our community list. Each are mapped to a different IP precedence value. Okay, and in order to apply that route map to our BGP routing, the command that you need is under the router BGP 100, and what you need is a command called table map. Okay, and then we tie the route map to the command, so we call it QPPB. So that basically ties the mapping table to the BGP process. Next, we need to specify which interface you want the classification for the packets to happen. In this case, it's R1 serial interface, and that's a 0001 that's facing R5, since our packet's gonna be coming from R5. So we get under serial 001. And then to apply that, we use the command BGP policy and you can basically match either source or destination of the packets. Since we're gonna be classifying based on where the packet is coming from, and that's the subnet loopback 10 and 11, we're gonna classify based on source IP. And then since we're setting the IP press, you can see that you also have an option to set the QoS group instead of IP precedence. Here we are marking the packet with IP precedence, so we're going to use IP prec map. Okay, so if you do show IP Ceph 
five five zero zero detail. You can see there's a has really been a change because for the change to tech effect, you have to do a hard clear on the BGP. Okay, so give that a second there. All right, so now the R1 has learned R5 loop back 10 routes. You can see now we also have, so have an additional lines right here that said that route has a mapping to IP presence value of 5. The next part of our task is to configure R1 to provide QoS to the classify packet as they leave AS100. Okay, so we have to come up with the class map policy map so we can provide an outbound QoS. For the IP presence 5, we're going to make a priority queue. I'll prioritize it by 30%. For IP presence 4, we're going to guarantee remaining bandwidth 15%, and IP presence 3, we're going to guarantee bandwidth of remaining 5%. Okay, so so far we are able to mark a packet as it comes in through R1 serial interface. So now when R1 has to forward that packet out to R3, we want to enforce a QoS policy outbound. Okay, and that's just also to prove that those packet has been correctly marked with the uh, IP presence value. So on R1, we have to come up with a class map to match each type of packet. First, it's gonna be precedence value five, so we call prec five, and we're gonna match it based on IP precedence value of five, and then we have precedence of four, and then we're gonna match precedence of three, three, okay. Once we have a class map, we move on to our policy map. We're going to call it 2R3. First, we're going to class, or using the class map of PREC5. So it's going to match any packets that has IP presence of 5. And then we're going to set a priority queue of percent, since we said 30. And then we can classify on PREC4. But this time, we're going to use a guarantee bandwidth of the remaining. Again, percent, 15, and then for our IP present number three, we're gonna do bandwidth remain of remaining percent five. Just like how we have this specified right here. And now we have to apply the policy map outbound of the interface, and that's is a fast zero zero interface. So with the service policy command, with the direction of output, to R3. All right, so we can do show policy map interface fast zero zero and see how the QoS are currently apply. Right here, prec five, four, three, and the default. So what we can do now is to perform a ping from each of these loopbacks and see if those packets are classify and apply, I have the QoS apply properly. So that's gonna be on R5. First, we're gonna try to ping six, six, Zero 01, which is the router R6, loopback 10. And first we're gonna source from loopback 10 on R5, and that should be classified with IP presence value of five. Okay, so we do a ping, we get a ping reply. And now if we go back to R1 and look at right here on the class map with IP precedence of five, we can see that our five ICMP pings, or ping requests, or echo requests has been classified and match correctly under this particular class map. Okay, next we're gonna try to ping from loopback 11, and that's gonna cause a match for our IP precedence four, again, five packets right here, IP precedence four, and then last we have source of sourcing from loopback 12, and that should cause a match for precedence three. You can see zero packets before, and now we have a match of five packets also for IP precedence three. Okay, so basically what's happening is that we have configured a classification rule on R1 based on the community list. So basically, regardless of how many routes or subnets is behind R5, as long as R5 knows what those mappings or rules in R1s are, R5 has a complete control of what packets going to be classified to which IP presence value based on the 
community va value that gets tagged to those particular routes. Okay, so the community value is just an example of the BGP attributes that you can use. And obviously you can configure R1 to classify the packet based on other BGP attributes like uh, AS path or AS number as well. All right, so that wraps up our video on QPPB features on BGP. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmanist.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.